And joining us now, of course, is no one better to talk about Lou Harris Champer than one that played for her. It was part of the two Women's College World Series appearances back in 09 and 2010, an All American, legendary, longtime NPF, All NPF player. I speak of Kristen Sandberg, who joins us now to talk about Lou Harris Champer. And uh, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I think it uh, came as a little shock. So I think it's it's starting to settle in a little bit. So yeah, that's the thing I wanted to ask you about. What was your reaction when that went down? I think it was a Sunday. It was during the Women's College World Series. And all of a sudden, there's a press release. There's an there's announcement that Lou Harris Champer is announcing her retirement. What was it? Was it shock? Was it disbelief? Was it what was kind of went through your mind when that all came about? I mean, I was in the middle of doing some uh, lessons, doing a hitting lesson with a, a kid of mine. And all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up with text message, you know, that coach had retired. And I think the first one actually came from Quinlan over at LSU. And I was like, wait, what is this? Where did this come from? Um, I don't think that anyone really saw it coming, to be honest. I think she's pretty good about keeping her business to herself. Um, but just totally in shock, I would say, for myself and for others, as we started talking, you know, I think a lot of people had the same reaction of maybe a little confusion, shock, disbelief. When you think of Georgia softball, I mean, she's she is Georgia softball. She's been the figurehead there for 20 something years. So to now look at the program going forward and, and not see her name on it is definitely going to be something different. Um, but I'm sure, you know, that the university will find a qualified candidate for the position and will continue to lead the program to great heights. Yeah, this was kind of like, unlike Coach Candrea, you know, Coach Candrea, there have been whispers, there were people speculating. So you know, I think kind of people knew and Mike and Joy even said he was talked about it for a while. This kind of came out of left field. I mean, I've had a chance to talk to Lou Harris Champer a lot this year, actually, through media availability with Zooms and things like that. And there was never any hint. There was never not that you would expect her to give you any hits, but there was no there wasn't a whisper of a rumor like I don't know how long she's been thinking about this, but if no matter how long she thought about this, she did a heck of a job of keeping this a secret. Yeah, I mean, then that's that's kind of typical coach, to be honest. If you think about her, you know, in-game interviews that she gives, she's kind of a, a woman of lesser words, so to speak. Um, you know, she's never going to tip her cap or, or show what she's got up her sleeve. So I think she probably also didn't want it to be a distraction to what the team was trying to accomplish at the time. Um, you know, so the less people knew, the the more focused the players would be, the coaches would be. You know, we saw with Candrea, obviously, everything hanging over. Will this be it? Will this be, you know, his last time? You know, and for a guy like that, he's another one. It's hard to think of college softball without his name in the picture. So for her to be able to keep this a secret and just keep her team focused on the goal, um, focused on going to the World Series, I think to her, you know, credit is probably a, a very smart move. How long do you think she's known about this? Do you think she made this decision, you know, you know, re, you know, recently? Do you think she's been thinking about this for a while? I mean, that's so fascinating about it because, you know, with the Kendrea story and in comparison, a lot of the players kind of knew, but they kind of, you know, they, that's why the whole, hey, let's play for coach. I don't think any of the players for Georgia knew until literally this, the World Series was over for them. Like, <laughs> I, I would probably have to agree with that. I mean, I don't, I, I have some communication with some of them through social media, obviously, but no, I've, I'm a little far removed at this point to have that that personal connection on the inside. So, yeah, I would have to say it came equally as a shock to her team as it did to the rest of us. So, just tell us a little bit. You know, because you got to know Coach, you played for Coach. Describe her for those that don't know her. What, what describe Lou Harris Champer, the person and the coach? Uh, you know, we on those of us that have been within the program, uh, we kind of started referring to her as Mama at one point, because as tough as she could have been as a coach, as hard as you hard on you as she could have been, you know, on days even where you didn't want it, you didn't like it. You didn't want to hear it. 
uh, her, her figure there is just one of, you know, she expects the best out of her players and she's going to push each one of us to be the best version of ourselves that we can to become strong, independent, confident women that can compete on the softball field, but also go out into the world after and, you know, get jobs and be successful. So, you know, we really, as much as she was coach, she was mama and she'll always be our mama. You know, um, I remember going in for surgery, my, my fifth year of, of school, and she was still checking on us, checking on me, seeing, seeing how uh, I was doing after the surgery. You know, I pretty much every year was getting text messages, you know, Hey, happy birthday. Uh, during my years in the NPF, you know, she would check in with a lot of us, you know, we had seven, eight, nine girls playing at one time at one point. And she was still, you know, if we needed help, she was a, she was an ear to listen. She was there to uh, try and help us through whatever struggles that we were having. So, you know, I think that's, that's something that you as a player can appreciate, you know, that your coach is there for you, not just during those four years that you're within their program, but they're there for you, you know, for life. What do you remember the first time you met her? Um, you know, it was the first time I met her. I was, I was on an official, uh, unofficial visit. I was walking around campus with, uh, my dad and my aunt and uncle who live in Georgia. And, you know, she just seemed very energetic. Uh, she seemed very passionate about Georgia and the program and where she was wanting to take it. And, you know, as a player, you know, prospective student athlete coming in, I think that's something that you want to see is that your coaches committed to your development, um, that they're committed to the program, you know, that they're not going to go anywhere in, you know, the years from your unofficial to when you actually step foot on campus. You know, I think she ensured us that, you know, we were going to get there and we were going to get what we earned. You know, there was no really sugarcoating it. It was, Hey, this is your spot to lose basically, or this is your spot to earn. So, you know, from the get-go, it was clear that she was going to expect the best out of you every single day, whatever that, whatever that meant. And that's what drew you to go there, right? That, that's kind of what drew you there. And that was part of a, really the era there where you got so much talent on that roster to the point where you would get to Oklahoma City for the first couple of times. What was that like to kind of get the program to Oklahoma City and get her there? for the first time as far as as a Georgia Bulldog leading the program there. Did you sense her tone any different when they got to Oklahoma City back then? Uh, or was it the same Lou? No, I mean, we when we went to o Oklahoma City, it was business as usual. You know, we we spent days of the season hitting off hack attacks during practice leading up to um, regionals, super regionals, the world series, even regular sec series midweeks, you know, she had those pitching machines set for us to prepare for whatever pitcher we were going to face. Uh, she was all about the little details from a defensive standpoint. I think that year we actually ended up being the best defensive team in the country, which we always kind of thought was a little ironic because we spent so much time hitting all the time, um, <laughs> you know, but we could hit too. You know, I think that was those years was just a testament to how great of a recruiter that she is, her ability to spot talent and be able to bring it to Georgia, you know, and then we got to the World Series and here we are, everyone's joking about how we put hack attacks on a charter flight and flew them to Oklahoma City with us because we were out there on the backfield still hitting off of them, even, you know, warming up before games. I mean, that's just, that's how we did it. And I think that that was in part why we were so successful. I'm glad you brought up the hitting side. Cause I, I you know, you've had, George has produced so many great hitters. You're one of them uh, that have had tremendous success, not only during the college years, but they would go on playing professionally, have great success. And I remember I asked Jerry Glasgow about that, about, Hey, look, what is it about your, you know, your offense and the philosophy? And I asked coach Tony Baldwin as well about it. And they both, stop short and say wait it starts all with Lou you know if you're going to give credit to offense it all starts with Lou 
And I thought with Jerry in particular, I thought that was so classy. Just explain that. Why Why did they say that? What is it about Lou that, that, that's, that makes that offense go? Because a lot of people might think, well, it's Jerry Glasgow. It's his offense or Tony Baldwin's offense. But they all would come to say, no, it's Lou that starts. It, it all starts with Lou. Well, uh, I'll just start with, I think that there were nights where we thought she probably slept at the facility because <laughs> she was there so early and she was in the video room, lights off, you know, breakfast, coffee, whatever it was, uh, watching opponent film, watching us as hitters, uh, where we could be better, where we could uh, pick some things up um, from a from making a plan in in the batter's box, you know, was the pitcher tipping a changeup? Was she tipping a rise ball? Whatever, you know, she probably has one of the best eyes in the game for that. She'll she'll sit there and and she would have. I remember walking in one time and there was, you know, a two by two screen and there were four different Danielle Laurie pitches on them and she had each one of them with this was this pitch and here's what she did on a on a changeup and you know, she ran that video and we were expected to pick up what pitch was coming. Um, she'd ask us after each pitch, you know, what was that? And, you know, as a group, we'd have to respond. Um, so, you know, when you talk about the offense at Georgia, yes, I would have to agree with, with Tony and Jerry that it did start with her because she spent countless hours breaking down film like I said, whether it was opponents or whether it was us as hitters, just where we could be better, where we could be more successful and have a plan and have an approach when we went into the batter's box uh, so that we would get runners on and score them. That's pretty remarkable. And I think the remarkable thing is, you know, a guy like Jerry Glasgow, the, 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 the coaching tree of Coach Champer, you know, you're part of two unique coaching trees. Uh, the LSU Beth Tarina tree, which is obviously it's kind of exploded, but Coach Lou Harris Champer has her own tree as well. Uh, you know Jerry Glasgow, who she hired as a travel ball coach at the time. Think about that. Like, and he even admits he says he owes a lot to her because of that. Because how many people would take a chance on him at that time? Uh, yeah, Tony Baldwin, obviously, in the success of Rachel Fico, who's obviously also both of the Tarina and the Champer tree. Elisa Goler now is at Western Illinois. Laura Trout is over there in Illinois. What is it about her tree that, that a lot of players go on or she, you know, a lot of people go on to head coaching jobs or coaching in general? Like you went into coaching because in part, for, I would imagine, because of her. I think you just have to look at how passionate she is about the game, how passionate she is about her players, um, you know, there's, there's kind of this energy that surrounds her. I said it the other day, she's probably one of the most competitive people that I've ever met. And that competitiveness rubs off on you as a player. And it continues even into your, into your coaching career. You know, you look at her and you see how much she's dedicated to growing players, to growing the game. And I think you or us, you know, the, the people that you mentioned, we have a lot of those same values. We want to continue to compete. We want to be role models for the next generation to become the same strong, independent, confident women that we became. And, you know, it's just, you love it. You love to see it and you want to continue it. You want to, you want to keep being that person for the next generation. And I'm sure that she has players now that will feel the same way and they'll they'll want to go into coaching whether it's college high school travel whatever it may be you know this the tree doesn't stop I think it just because she's retired I think there's going to continue to be people that come through that program and you know whether it's her or whether it's the new staff I think part of it too is the love for Georgia and the love you know for Georgia softball you you want to continue to represent that to the best of your ability yeah, I mean, Chelsea Wilkerson is another one who's gone into coaching as well. I mean, the list goes on and on. Katie Rickovic, obviously, is in the conference. It's a really lengthy list. How much did you get to know her once you were done playing? Did you notice a difference in her? Did you have a, did you feel like you had a diff, you got to know her better? Did you have a different relationship once you weren't playing for her, that you were just an alum? And did you notice a difference in her? I mean, anytime I think you become an alum, the 
uh, not that the relationship changes, but obviously, you know, when you're outside the lines, you don't have some, you know, fiery coach yelling at you to do this perfectly or do that better. And, you know, I, I think all of us as players had that moment where we wondered why she was being, you know, I'll say as difficult as she was at the time, but I think we all look back now and, and we see those reasons why and the lessons that were learned, um, you know, but you become an alum and it becomes a little, you know, it's, it's friendly. It's, you know, smiles back and forth, joking, laughter, you know, you reminisce about some of the days that were a little bit difficult or you see her out recruiting and you, you start talking about, you know, Hey coach, how are you so good at this? Like, how do you manage to be at four different fields at one time? How do you keep yourself, you know, so undercover? I think so many times I think back to when she was recruiting, I didn't even know she was there, uh, but I would get the text messages afterwards, you know, saying, Hey, good job. Or Hey, great hit. And you're just like, wait a second, how are you even there? But, you know, she's still the same, same person that she is. She's I'll say it again. She's mama, you know, she'll always be that. She just is that type of person to, you know, whether you're playing for her or whether you're t five, 10, 15 years removed, you know, you walk up and she's so happy that you're there and so happy to see you. And, you know, that's, that's again, as an alumni, you love to see that, that she continues to care about people long after they're gone. What do you think she's going to do? Like, like everything you've described her, she sounds like a lifer that lives on the field. All of a sudden, come February, come fall ball, she's not going to be on the field. What do you think she, how do you think she's going to handle that? I think she's going to invest a lot of time in her kids. You know, they're at the point where they're in high school now. A lot of them are, I think, uh, running track, maybe gymnastics. I, I forget what I saw uh, recently. I know at least one of them is, is running. So I'm sure she's going to take this time to watch them grow and develop into the athletes that they are, help them through their college experience. You know, she missed a lot of time with them at, when they were younger, whether it was because we were traveling or she was recruiting, you know, it's tough to her, her husband's a swimming coach there. So the two of them are constantly back and forth with the kids. So I'm sure that there's time that maybe she would have liked to have back so she's going to spend this time with her kids and watch them develop and watch you know their success going forward what was it like going through your mind here as they made this postseason run you know that was an up and down year young roster they beat duke in the regionals they host and then they just dominate florida second time that she's beaten florida in the supers beat them in 16 and beat them in 18 without giving up uh, here this year, I should say 21 without giving up a run. What went through your mind as they made this run? Did it catch you off guard? And do you think that played a role in her decisions? Like, you know what? This is a good way to go out is in Oklahoma City. I think you look at that end of the season where they went on that kind of skid for a little bit. I don't know if I remember right, but maybe it was 0 and 7. You know, but you have to know that she's prepared for what's coming. She probably was hours upon hours just getting stuff prepped for the team so that they were, you know, as prepared as they could be to go into Gainesville, to be able to do what they did. You have to always expect that when the season matters most is when Georgia's going to show up. You know, they that's just the type of team they are. They're they're gritty, they're gutsy, you know, they've got a lot of heart when they play and they're just gonna go out there and compete. Doesn't matter what the situation is. Um, and they compete, they compete the best when the stage is the biggest, you know? So to go into Gainesville, having that, you know, little Georgia, Florida rivalry, um, it's hard to say I expected it, but, you know, I wasn't counting them out because I knew when they once they got there, it was going to be business and they were not going to be beat. The thing that impresses me about her now, you could tell me if I'm wrong. She see, she seems to be one of those coaches that lets her coaches coach. Like after that Florida Super Regional, she went out of her way to give credit to Rachel Fico for the game plan on the pitching side. And that's why they shut down Florida. She's talked about Coach Tony and the game plan he has in preparation. 
Is that accurate that she kind of lets her coaches in? Because you know this, a lot of coaches sometimes have their fingerprints on everything and everything has to go through that. I'm not saying that doesn't go through her, but it seems like in talking to a lot of people around her that she lets her coaches coach and that's why they like working for her. Is that accurate? Yeah, I would say that's a, a very fair statement. I mean, Tony is probably one of the smartest guys I've come across from a hitting standpoint. You know, and Rachel has had the experience with Lou and with Beth, as you've mentioned, who in her own right is a incredible pitching coach. So, you know, when you've got the kind of minds that they have, that they can sit in a room and collectively game plan together and come to a, a unanimous kind of, all right, here's what we're going to do. It's hard not to trust them because you're all at that point on the same page and everyone's bought into the game plan. So at that point you just got to let them do what they do best and I think that she she did that and that's that's why her teams have always been successful you're you know the Georgia athletics very well you're a diehard sports fan you cover you you watch a lot of sports you're diehard baseball hockey fan how should Georgia honor Lou Harris Champer moving forward oh man that's a tough one I mean you know she is as I mentioned Georgia softball so you know I forget if the, the hitting facility down there has a name yet, but something, something in that softball complex, I, in my mind, needs to be dedicated to her. You know, she just, she puts so much of her heart and soul into that program. And, you know, I, I'm sure she doesn't need the recognition to know that. We all know that, but I think it would be, you know, a nice remembrance of somebody who was essentially the program for so many years probably name the field something like that I mean yeah well you have Jack Turner Stadium you know so there's that uh, you know I wouldn't change that they were a huge part of getting that stadium you know but if there's a room in the building or you know the the hitting facility down there hasn't been renamed I mean heck we spent so much time down there with her and, and she she did with us as players from eight o'clock in the morning to five six o'clock at night it seems right to me I don't know Something needs to be done Something. there, right? I mean, I don't know how they honor the other greats at Georgia, like Vince Dooley's and the Her you know, Herschel Walkers, but I think she should be kind of up there because it's going to be strange to see Georgia softball without her, right? Like, it's going to be, I mean, for me, from the outside, it's going to be seem strange. I can only imagine from people like you that's been inside of it. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's the figurehead. You know, you look on the field and Georgia's batting. She's probably somewhere halfway into left field you know, or she's down there kicking dirt right, right behind third base at whoever's batting, you know, but change, change is inevitable at some point, you know, she wasn't going to spend the rest of her life there at some point it would have changed. So, you know, I guess this is the time and it was right for her. You know, we all, we all love her for what she gave to the program and, you know, we wish her nothing but the best as she, you know, moves into this next chapter of her life. Do you have a funny Lou Harris Champer story you could share that uh, that, that oh, would kind of describe her there? Well, there's got to be. I mean, oh, you got plenty of Champer stories. Uh, yeah, I got a lot. Um, I, I'll go with this one, I guess. Uh, so we we do a lot of hitting, obviously, in practice, and I was somebody who, you know, if I didn't hit the perfect line drive somewhere in the middle of the field, she'd be like, "Sandy, get out." And, you know, you, you pop a ball up, you roll a ball over. I can remember a hundred times hitting a ball, hitting a ground ball. And she'd be like, Sandy, get out. You're not a slapper. You know, like, yeah, coach, I know I'm not fast enough to be a slapper. I, I get it. I'm a catcher, you know, running's not really my forte, but, um, going forward, they did bobbleheads and there was a Lou Harris champer bobblehead. So you know, given the amount of times during my career that my teammates probably heard Sandy get out, uh, Laura Trout <laughs> takes the bobblehead, sticks it on her, sticks it on her computer, pulls up a Microsoft Word document behind it, and just writes Sandy get out. Oh. And I get it. You know, we all get it in a group text, and uh, I was. I was dying. You know, I thought it was the, it was just so clever. It was such, you know, a, it was such a Lou moment, I guess, 
that, you know, I get it. I'm just like, <laughs> I couldn't believe she did it. You know, there were so many times, um, you know, not to go, you know, not to go on and on, but, you know, we're, we're warming up for a game and, you know, we're doing this, this three plate drill where, you know, you got to adjust the the various speeds and, you know, I'm, I'm having a rough time. Like I really am. And it was probably one of the, the one time that she like, didn't tell me to get out of the batting cage. <laughs> So, you know, she keeps throwing, she keeps throwing and I'm having a hard time. Like I'm fouling it off. I'm hitting it off the end of the bat. I'm getting jammed, whatever. And finally she's like, that's Sandy. That's six for me. Like, when are you going to make an adjust adjustment? That's six in a row. And at this point, she's like very calm about it, you know, and then the seventh one comes and like, it's really difficult. You know, I, I hit the same garbage ball that I hit beforehand and, She's like, that's seven for me and none for you. Let's go. When are you going to make an adjustment? <laughs> you know, and the eighth ball comes and I, I, I don't know. I maybe swung. I don't know, but I clearly did not hit it well. <laughs> and she was like, Sandy, that's eight for me and none for you. Let's go make an adjustment. You know, and she's then now like with each one, she's like getting louder and louder oh, and man. more annoyed. Right. And so, you know, the, the last ball comes and I hit a square line drive right back at the cage, like that she's throwing behind, you know? And I so confidently just threw my bat over my shoulder and was like, well, coach, you almost threw a shutout. And I had this moment of like, <laughs> oh my God, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> and, you know, she just laughed at me. She, but it goes back to the competitive competitiveness, right? Like she's super competitive. So she's sitting there and she's making it a game and it's like, she's trying to push me to be better. And, you know, as frustrated as I got when she was like, make an adjustment, make an adjustment. That's, you know, seven for me, eight for me, none for you. And you're like, you're like, just stop already. Right. But that's the competitive part. And I think that's, that's kind of situations like that is what made me the hitter. I was, you know, as a senior, as a pro player for eight years, it's, it, the competitive drive is there, you know, and I think part of her probably loved the fact that I turned around and said, you know, you almost threw a shutout, but <laughs> there, like I said, there was a moment where I, I thought I was just going to be told, get out. <laughs> yeah. Get, yeah. She's got a little bit of a humor though. Like, yes. I've, and I've, she's opened up, I think the last couple of years, I don't know if that's just natural, but she's opened up more to the media and kind of that, at least when I've gotten to talk to her a little bit, she's got that side humor there. Uh, do you sense that that she's opened up more in the la here in the last few years and maybe she did when you first kind of you know committed to her there or you think she's always been like that and she just decided now to maybe open the curtains more I think you see spurts of it when you're playing there's you know at the end of the day she has to do her job and she's got to win ball games so you know she's going to do what she needs to do but we've always joked that over the years, we feel like she's becoming softer, so to speak. You know, I think one of the texts we had going back and forth or, or tweets that was on social media during this whole playoff run was, you know, that mama was giving hugs out like it was candy, you know, <laughs> and we're, you know, with some of us are like, I, I don't remember getting that many hugs at times, but, you know, you have to adapt with the athletes that you have. For us, we a lot of us were good at handling that kind of tough love, if you will, where, you know, it's very demanding that you're perfect all the time. Some athletes, you know, need the love. They need to know that you care about them. So, you know, with any coach, I think that you always have to continue to adapt with the type of players that you have on your roster. If you're not connecting with them, if you're not adapting your styles, you know, you're, you lose players. And, you know, I, that's, that's what, keeps people like her and, and coach Candre in the game for so long is that they're able to adapt and grow as coaches along with their players in order to continue to be successful. Last question for whoever the next head coach is at Georgia, what is the most important thing that that head coach has to understand about Georgia softball to be successful? Guts, fight, heart, courage, belief. Those are the, those are the words that coach Harris talks all the time. Um, Georgia, you know, even blue collar work ethic, 
you know, nothing is too, you know, we're never too good for anything, you know, so it's always about going back to the chalkboard, grinding it out, being gritty, you know, nothing's given to you. Everything is always earned. And if you continue, if you continue that tradition that's been there of, you know, banding together as a team, fighting as one, you know, scratch, claw, fight, find a way. Um, I know I just threw out all of her, her little phrases there, but oh, you got the coaching I, lingo down. I, it is, but that, you know, that's what it is. You know, you don't have to use those words, but those are the type of players that you need. And that's the type of program that I think you continue with and Georgia continues to be successful and hopefully gets over the hump to, you know, not just be at the world series, but win it. All right. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to just go ahead and debunk <clears throat> You as a head coaching candidate, because that means you would not be able to watch the Islanders, right? I, I mean, I, I could stream them. I could stream them. That's for sure. As long <laughs> as we keep, we keep playing hockey into June. Oh man, that's too funny. Uh, Kristen Sandberg joining us here on In the Circle. Uh, thank you for your perspective. I think it's been cool to talk about Coach Champer. We could do this for hours. Uh, but like you said, we, we want to make sure you don't miss the Islanders hockey game. But uh, <laughs> look, it's a pretty, pretty big moment in Georgia softball history. I think you're perfect to kind of describe it, among others. And uh, awesome sharing this story with you. We'll definitely get you back on down the road. And who knows, maybe we'll get you on to get, get your reaction as the new coach gets hired and settles in and things. But uh, th in the meantime, uh, be good. And uh, thanks for taking the time and sharing some of your stories about Lou Harris-Champer. Thanks for having me, Eric.